Good morning, everyone. Hope all is well with you. Um, wanted to just come on this morning and touch bases with you. But before I do that, I thought about this yesterday and I said, I'm going to do this today. So just for a second, I just wanted to pray. So, Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for the opportunities. We thank you for waking us up this morning and starting us on our way. Thank you for giving us the activities of our limbs. Lord, let the words of my mouth be acceptable in thy sight. O oh God, O oh Lord, my strength, my buckler, Jehovah Jireh, my provider, my everything. Be with me. Guide my words. Let the people hear the words and receive the words. Amen. Uh, let, let me decrease that you may increase. That's it. Amen. Anyways, y'all. So I got up this morning. And I began to think, and I said, because I was on the phone last night, and a friend of mine was like, well, Mario, why why, why put the people on blast? Hey, Miss Ida, why put the people on blast? You don't want to detour somebody from church, from the Lord. It's, you know, it's that church mentality. And I told them, I said, if... If it's me deterring them, well then, what about the videos that's circulating? What about the people that's performing the acts? What about the people that's doing all of these things and still getting up preaching? You know, I do believe that God still speaks to us. I do believe that. I do believe God still speaks to us. I believe that we turn a deaf ear to him. Now, let me tell you what happens when you turn a deaf ear to God. And I'm living proof of it. When you turn a deaf ear to God, things happen to you at your own will. And I was just talking to a client of mine about this last night. I broke out this week. Like real bad, rash, allergic reaction. I had ate some fish. Now, mind you, the Spirit of the Lord told me, told me not to eat this. I said, I'm hungry and I'm going to order it and eat it anyways. Well, I ate it anyways and I was hungry. I was like, oh, I'm going to eat this. I started getting headaches. I wasn't itching. I started getting headaches. And I started breaking out all over. I had bumps all in my face. It's, it's almost gone now. I had bumps all in my face. My face broke out. Rash everywhere, all over my body. I saw it really bad on my legs yesterday. I just had it everywhere. And at first I was blaming my dogs because I was like, maybe they brought some poison ivy in the house or whatever. And I was like, no. And I was talking to my sister about it. She said, no, that's something internal. It's something that you, you ate. And I said, the only thing I ate, and I narrowed it down, and it came down to the fish. And the Lord reminded me. They say the Holy Ghost brings it back to your remembrance. The Lord reminded me, I told you not to do that. And see, when it comes down to these people and getting exposed just remember, God reminded you not to do those things, not to get involved in those sending those things or whatever the case may be. Are we all at fault to doing something? Absolutely. We're all at fault to doing something. But you have to realize this. We have been disrespecting the Lord's house, his name. Well, no, we, we don't disrespect his name because some of us don't even know his name. Mm. But we have disrespected God's house. We have disrespected his authority. We've disrespected who he is and even the people. And I ain't talking about these jack legs. I ain't talking about them. But I'm talking about the real people who have a sincere heart for him. But we have disrespected God in such a way. And it's like, and when I was riding with the saints yesterday... They said, Mario, if that happened to you and the Lord spoke to you and said that, what would happen if God would start doing that again? I said, babe, we'll be just looking around. Oh, 
you sinned. Oh, you sinned. You you did something. Uh, oh, honey. Oh, child. You, you broke out bad. You got something. See, we don't believe that God. We don't believe that God. We don't believe him like that. We believe God enough for materialistic things. We believe him for materialistic things. The disrespect this week, the disrespect this week has been so major. The disrespect this week has been so major. And it goes back to the days that we didn't have social media. Exactly. Thank you, Miss Ida. See, that allergic reaction could have been major and closed my throat. Like it could have been something very serious. I've never had a reaction like that. But I thank God that God gave me a taste. You understand? Of what it's like. Hey, you want to be disobedient? I'm trying to. And it's not that you're going against somebody. I'm trying to spare you because you're about to eat something. That could, that could mess you up. Understand? But see, this disrespect that we see nowadays, it goes back. It goes back. It goes back. It goes back. We, it goes back to before we had a camera phone. It goes back before we had an internet. Before we had social media. Before we had any of those things. Excuse me. And this has been going on, but the Lord has allowed it to become public. The Lord has allowed it to become public. I've never in my life, never in my life, hear me, never in my life have I ever heard of anybody masturbating or jacking off in church. Never. Not, not in the sanctuary, at least. Not in the pulpit, at least. Never in my life have I heard of somebody saying, the church is full of hate, the church is full of hate, so I'm going to go into church and I'm going to beat my meat and, and G's all over everywhere. I've never heard that before. And for people to make up excuses. See, I'm going to tell you something. If these young men decided to go and do something to themselves, here's the thing. I don't want nobody to go do anything to themselves. But if you go do something to yourself, it's on you. You understand? It's on you. 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 We've gotten so disrespectful to the Lord. Anything goes. You got preachers who are in cliques. And they do it and everything. Cover me, brother. Cover me, brother. Cover me. We cover one another in mess. We cover one another in mess. And we know you got a girlfriend. We know you got two boyfriends. We know you doing in and everything. And we're going to still let you get up and preach. And we're going to go on about our business. Cover me, brother. Cover me, sister. And I'm going to tell you something. Me and, me and the, the mothers who was talking yesterday, and they said, Mario, we ain't seen no ladies. And they said, you know why we ain't seen no ladies? Because the ladies ain't dumb. They know they're not dumb. Oh, because the women do that stuff too. But see, the men are so bold with it and cocky with it. It's like you don't care. And so then what happens is you get taken down. You get taken down. And who has to take over? The women. The women that's been backing you and, and seeing this stuff the whole time. Because you said that they're not worthy to be in that position. But they've been right there the whole time. Taking notes. And saying this is not what we're going to do. We're going to do it a little different. We're going to handle it a little different way. Oh, baby, it's, a, it's some ladies out here with some side pieces. Oh, yes. Don't make it right. But women are just a little smarter. Yeah. So, at this point, you see all of these 
men to God that's being exposed. And people are like, that's making God look bad. I said, no, it's not making God look bad. I mean, it it's making God look bad. But it's making people say, if this is the church, I don't want to be involved. I will never stop loving the Lord. But his representatives are jacked up and I don't want to be nowhere involved. Period. I don't want to be nowhere involved. How are you representing God? How are you representing God? And your actions are like they are. How are you representing the Lord? And you have no shame. How are you representing God? And you're con Baby, I'm talking about like, baby, these men out here are... They got, they got the holes on speed dial. Yeah. See... A lot of the church folks don't like this. A lot of the church people don't like this because it's facts. Oh, they want the gossip and they want the tea. And they're going to hate you at the same time. So they're going to come and talk junk about you. And then they're going to listen to because that. Honey, like, you this, you that. Tell me more. Tell me more. I don't like you such and such and such and such. Tell me more. Baby. You have loose lips and itching ears. Period. Loose lips and itching ears. And you know what? To be honest with you all, I have been very, very, very passionate about all of this. I've been very passionate about all of this. I really have. And maybe a little too passionate. But I'm going to tell you something. I love the Lord. I love the Lord. Not because of what he's done for me. But he's just awesome. He's just good. He's awesome and he's just good. He's awesome. I don't love God because he bought me a new car. Or he opened a door so that I can go buy a new car because he ain't bought me nothing. Let's, 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 let's put that in the right perspective. I love the Lord, period. This for the saints this morning. This for the saints this morning. And the reason why, and the reason why I love him is because he is just who he is. And it's just the little things that make me love him. It's the little things that make me love him. I love him because he first, he was my first ever lover. My first ever lover. Can't nobody love me like him. When I'm hurt, he some kind of way puts his arms around me. And says it's going to be okay. I love him because he was the first person ever in life. To help me to see myself the way he sees me. And regardless. To however man says that they see me. I love him. I love him. Not because he first loved me. I'm serious. I love him. I love him. I love him. I love him. And if I'm passionate about God and his house and the things that he has, then that, I don't apologize for that. I don't care what you are, blind, crippled, crazy, straight, gay, bisexual, trisexual, pansexual. It don't matter. We have totally lost respect for the Lord. Totally lost respect for him. And what he has been doing in these recent years is 
is exposing is exposing and showing you yourself and saying this is you my child this is you my child you don't love me hey you don't love me you want what I can give you yes you want what I can give you you don't love me you don't love me you want what I can give you don't care that I sent my son down there you want me to sit up here and just love on you I actually y'all asking about the Twitter page I actually have three Twitter pages I have King Job Show 1, which is currently suspended. I have King Job Show 2, and I have my DiMaggio, my business page. So, just look those up. Yeah, it's currently suspended right now. But it was suspended because, you know, the children wanted to be upset about it. But isn't it funny? Hey, Natasha, big sister. Hey, Wilbert, good morning, y'all. When I, Isn't it funny? Listen to me. Isn't it funny that the people want you to expose them, but then they want you to be quiet at the same time? Ain't it funny? I've never seen so much contradiction in my life. I asked a friend last night, I said, y'all don't like people being exposed. I said, but what about the pastor that's raping the children? You don't want that exposed? What about the pastor that's beating his wife? You don't want that exposed? What about the uncle or the auntie that's raping the child, the little girl? You don't want nobody talking about that? Oh, you want it talked about. No, I haven't talked to T.S. I haven't talked to T.S. Madison. I mean, I have talked to her, but I haven't talked to her recently. But then what you do to me is you want to shut me up. You understand? You want to shut up a William McCray because you don't like him. You want to shut up a Larry Reed because you don't like him. You want to shut up uh, these other commentators and things because you don't like them. And you want to shut their channels down and things like that. You want to say that these are God's anointed. These are not God's anointed people. Because God's anointed. Y'all gonna make me preach this morning. God's anointed. God's anointed. There is a fear. There is a reverence as it relates to God. Listen, I don't care what you do. It's some things that you do and you don't do. And when exposure comes to your house, the only thing you can say is, God, you did say it. God, you forgive me. Matter of fact, let me give you a perfect example. David, mm -hmm, yeah, it was him. David had a whole grown man killed for his wife because he was lusting after the man's wife. And had the man put on the front line and killed and married his wife and had a whole baby. God, let me tell y'all how God worked now. Come on here now. I can only tell you what I heard and what I know that I read. God sent the prophet to the man's house and gave him all type of scenarios. And the man wanted to act dumb like he didn't know what was going on. He said, all right, let me give you another example. And David still act dumb. Get down, get down now, get down. After a while, when David kept acting stupid, the prophet said, God is talking about you. You are the one, David. You are the one, young man in the church. You are the one, Tyrus Russell. You are the one, uh, 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 Sister Joshua Holmes. You are the one, Brian Car You are the one God is talking to. You have disrespected my house and my name and who I am for so long. 
And all I'm going to allow have to happen is the exposure to come and come and come and come and keep coming. You don't believe fat meat greasy. And see, the crazy part about it is he ain't been doing like he used to do, or at least it ain't been prevalent. Y'all ain't been dropping dead. You ain't been dropping dead. See, but the Lord showed me something this week. He said, Mario, when, you, when you're disobedient, this is what's going to happen to you. When you're disobedient and you do what you want to do, this is what's going to happen to you. You eat the things I tell you not to eat, you're going to break out in a rash. Y'all didn't like that right there. I know, I know y'all didn't, you know. I said, oh, Lord, my face. My face, my face, my face, Lord, my face, my beautiful face, my face, Lord, my arms and things. When you're disobedient and you put things in your body that I, t I specifically told you not to, you'll break out. And that shall be your shame. And you will know. You will know. Mm -hmm. You will know. And it shall be a reminder to you. When I tell you not to do something. This is what's going to happen to you. Because you cannot say that I did not tell you not to eat that food. And you know what I, I go back to? You know what I go back to? When God speaks to you and say, don't text that number. Don't call them people and tell them to come over. Don't do it. Because this is what's going to happen. Matter of fact, God didn't even got to tell you this was going to happen. You are, I'm t when, when the Lord told me don't eat that fish, when he told y'all, it's just fish, it's just fish. But see, an allergic reaction can have a multiplicity of reactions. You could break out, you could swell up, you can even die. See, mine was just a little mild. I broke out in hives and rash all over me. But some people have died. Mmm. Mmm. Y'all keep playing with them. Keep playing with them. This is that hour. This is that hour. You play with him, he gonna deal with you where you play with him at. Period. Oh y'all, y'all, y'all don't y'all don't believe the God of the Bible. Y'all believe the God of give me, 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 give me. Hey Aaron. Y'all don't believe the God of the Bible. Y'all play with it. Y'all believe him to be Candyman. You believe God to be my sugar daddy. That's what you believe. Oh, but he's still, he's still terrible. He's still a hard taskmaster. Oh, yes. But I'm going to say this again. I'm getting ready to go. To all of you all who have not taken any of these warnings serious. See, these are mild. These are mild. This little exposure. <laughs> I love you, Chanel. See, these, this exposure is mild. See, when God start exploding buildings, random stuff catching on fire, crazy freak accidents. See, I believe that God. You know, I, listen, you know, this little breakout, I ain't gonna lie, this little breakout, you know, it was, it was like, hey, hey, you know who told you this, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So to all y'all little preachers out here, to all y'all little preachers, hey, Ms. Mocha, all y'all little preachers out here who think y'all can just do what you want to do and get away with it, oh, baby. <laughs> hey, mama, good morning. <laughs> Listen, to all y'all little young preachers out here who think y'all doing things, y'all getting away with it, Oh, no, baby, it's just adding up. It's adding up. And see, God's going to do you just like he did David. 
God's going to do you just like he did the, the Egyptians. I'm not trying to scare you. I'm telling you what's real. God is allowing us to see how disrespectful we have become. The reason why these young babies can go into church and suck dick and do all kind of things like that is because they got it from somewhere. They got it from somewhere. And we have got so accustomed to it that we've gotten comfortable and we sit up here and we're like, heck, if they do it, I can do it. If they can do it, we can do it. Ain't no harm in, ain't nothing wrong with it. God ain't finna do nothing. God ain't finna do nothing. So you think, you think God is Jesus sitting up there on the cross on the wall. You think God is just, child, you know, he's he here. He here. See, y'all have never experienced the Lord before. Y'all have never really experienced the Lord before. You think, oh, I got a new car. That's the Lord. Thank you. Ooh, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shanda. Oh, no. Oh, no. No, no, no. No, no, no. No, no, no. No, 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 no. God is a awesome God. And he's a terrible God. And these seasons. And these seasons. He is slowly but surely. Allowing you to see. This is the ramifications of your fathers and your forefathers. That the young people can come in the church. And the young and the old can come in the church. And they've been disrespecting my house. They've been disrespecting my house. And y'all want to talk about the homosexuals? You want to talk about the homosexuals? Well, y'all pastors that's sleeping around on your wives and doing all type of acts and carrying on, and you act like don't nobody see you. I ain't, listen, I ain't got no problem with you being gay, whatever case it be. Y'all know me, I'm her hermer in section, you know, whatever. But it's still something called reverence for God. Period. When the people in the city, now I'm going to preach this. When the people, and it wasn't just the men, when the men and the women of the city of Sodom and Gomorrah disrespected God and his messengers, he destroyed the whole city. He wiped it out. Thank us again. Thank us again. Y'all talking about, oh, God destroyed the city for homosexuality. No, 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 no. God destroyed the city because of the lack of reverence, the pride, and the disrespect. I'm sending my messengers to save the people. You don't want to be saved. And y'all think saving is, oh, I'm going to give my life to the Lord. Da, 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 da. No. I want you to change your ways. That's what salvation is. Change your way so that you could be living longer. So that you could be prosperous and be in good health. Y'all think salvation is just being saved. No. Salvation is being saved from destruction. From wrath. From killing. Now you got a whole section of people, a whole group of people that live free and do what they want to do. And yes, we do have pride and we're happy that we have pride and we celebrate Pride Month and everything like that. But we, we, we celebrate Pride Month and we're still loose. There is no discipline. There is no order. There is no structure. We celebrate pride and we go out here and we still have sex with random people. We don't use protection. We go out here and sleep with other folks, men and women and carrying on. And what happens? The destruction of God is I'm going to allow your inner parts to be contaminated with AIDS, HIV, syphilis, gonorrhea, and it doesn't just go to the, to the gays. It goes to the straights too. When you decide to be disobedient and you decide not to have discipline, order and structure in your life this is what happened to you
Period. This, this is what happened to you. Y'all, y'all gays want to talk about the straights and how they just, and the church is mean and the church is hateful. No, what God is doing slowly but surely, God will allow you to take your own self out. I don't feel sorry for you. I don't. Mario, that's just so hard. Well, when you catch something, it's hard. It's hard. You, pe you preachers that out here having these random babies and carrying on and you don't take care of your children, it's hard. Because now a child has to grow up with a fictitious father that does not want to even take responsibility. That's hard. That's hard. Now you got a baby mama out here that's out here acting a fool because she got a child by you and you don't want to take care of your child and you got a whole family out here and now you got another child that's sitting right there in your audience that can't even call you daddy. It's hard. Oh, it's hard. You preachers out here getting sick, men and women, you out here getting sick. Getting sick. You're getting sick. You're getting sick. It's hard to find out that your favorite preacher then caught the AIDS. It's hard to find out that your favorite preacher then set up here and caught HIV. It's hard. They was preaching the word of God. They was just, they was just preaching the word of God. They were preaching. It's hard. But God's word does not change. You either love me, obey me, and follow my commands, period, or that's it, period. Oh, y'all want me to emotionalize you and, and tell you that you're awesome and God loves you. Oh, he loves you. But just like a parent, my parents love me, but I still got my behind whooped, period. My parents love me. And when I was wrong, I still got a whooping. When I stepped out of line, that belt was right there. Grandma, Granny used to tell me all the time, Mario, you know I love you. I got to whoop you. I got to whoop you because if I don't whoop you, you're going to go do it again. I love you enough to correct you. I love you enough to chastise you. And see, what's been happening is it's been this private correction for so long, but it has to be public now. Because you've disrespected God for so long. You've disrespected him for so long. And now. When we start seeing pastors drop dead. Oh we going to go and have a big old celebratory service. Oh shataman sotori. He was an awesome person. But he was hard headed and disobedient. And this is what caused the death. All these young people that's dropping dead, hard-headed and disobedient, period. And for so long, we've allowed this stuff to go on. Oh, we're we not talking about the gays. We've just talked about there is no reverence for God. And for so long, all this stuff is going, yo, God bless America. Uh-uh, no, mm -mm, no. We, we good on God bless America. We're spoiled. We're spoiled. We're spoiled. Hey, Drew. God has blessed America for a long time. And we even took his word. Catch this. We took his word and we enslaved people. And we continue to enslave people all in the name of God. And you know what he's saying? I didn't tell you to do none of that. Chanel, I woke up this morning and I got on the live and I prayed before I even got on here. I was on my live and I prayed and I said, Lord, word in my mouth. Word in my mouth. Give me what to say. Because at this point, y'all, I'm just being honest. At this point, 
I have cussed y'all out. I've used all kind of profanity. I've said everything and stuff like that. And you still don't want to hear. You know, I remember when, yeah, whatever. But I know what my assignment is. I know what my assignment is. It's to wake the people up and declare and to declare the day of the Lord. Honey, exposure is real because God is on his way. And I know we've been saying it. We've been saying it. We've been saying it. God is on his way. But if he ain't on his way, he already here. He already here collecting. Y'all don't hear me. He is collecting. And he's wiping out. You don't want to respect me. I'm expose you. You don't want to. You, you hold. I, I'm t I told mother this yesterday. I told mother this yesterday. Chanel was right there. I am an elder in the Lord's church. And mother said, well, baby, are you sanctified today? She said, I wasn't sanctified because I had earrings on. That's old school. I said, how is it that we wear this cross? How is it that we wear these crosses? And we still have sex outside of our marriages. You put this cross on. You put this cross on. This is the burden of the Lord. This is the burden of God. You have to bear this cross. When you put this cross on, it's yes to your will and yes to your way. I don't care how fine they are. I don't care how sexy they are. I don't care whatever the case may be. Yes to your will, Lord, and yes to your way. It's temptation. Jesus was tempted. And you know what he told the devil? You know what he told him? He said, man, should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. It looks good. Oh, baby, I bet it feel good, too. But I can't. I can't disrespect God. That's your burden that you have to bear. That's your burden. That's your burden. You don't want to carry the burden of the Lord? Take it off and sit down. Oh, you don't want to sit down. You don't want to sit down, do you? Because that money going to dry up. That's, so what we've done, what we've done is we put on the crosses and we preach in the name of the Lord. We speak in tongues in the name of the Lord. We lead to satire in the name of the Lord. And we lick, lap, suck, do everything. And we keep these crosses on. And now the people that we've laid up with don't even have respect for the reverence of God and the people of God because you, my dear sir, you, my dear madam, have sat there and disrespected your call and your anointing. So you wonder why we don't, we don't respect the house of God. We don't respect the people of God. Y'all more concerned about the bag. You more concerned about the dinero. You more concerned about uh, what, what, what I'm going to get out of. It's not about souls no more. Somebody going to preach this this morning. I promise y'all. And when they do, send me the video. You're not concerned about souls. You're concerned about a bag. You're concerned about a check. And you walk around here with this on. You hear me? You're so concerned. You don't even care. Take This is the yoke. Take my yoke up on you and learn of me. For my yoke is easy. And my burdens are light. And see, the yoke comes. And, and oh, thank you, Lord. Woo, Chanel, I feel the Lord this morning. The yoke comes. When you are in the wrong, he comes and yokes you up. 
Oh, you want to sit out here and make sex videos and tapes? Let me bring you back to reality. Let me bring you back to reality and remind you, whether you have this on or not, I called you. I chose you. You can't do what you want to do. And I'm going to still keep you working. I'm going to still keep you working. And I'm going to let you embarrass your own self. And I'm still going to get the glory. You're going to die sick. You're going to die lame. You're going to die with all type of whatever going on. Preachers dying from AIDS and HIV and all type of sicknesses and diabetes and carrying on. God forbid. He said, I'm going to take this yoke. And I'm going to yoke you up. And I'm going to let you get caught up in your own stuff. I'm going to let you get caught up in your own stuff. And I'm still going to get the glory because I am still God. I am just as much of a loving God as I am a terrible God. You don't believe me? It's just the truth. God was a perfect example to me this week. You don't want to hear me when I talk to you, nigga. I'm going to let you eat this food. And I'm going to let your behind break the freak out. I'm going to let you break out. And when you find out why you broke out. The only thing you need to do at that point is say, Lord, forgive me. Lord, forgive me. The Lord spoke to me and said, Mario, don't eat that. Oh, I'm hungry. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. I ate it anyways. And I had a bad reaction. Y'all, y'all don't believe that y'all want prophetic word. Eat, oh, 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 oh. I see a house in a car. I see God doing something right now. Honey, keep it. Because if the only time that you can hear the Lord is in church in a prayer line with the preacher standing in front of you with some oil and some water, whoo, 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 I hear God saying, Baby, first of all, God don't run his mouth like that. Thank you very much. It's become big business to goop the people. It's big business. It's big business to goop the people. The reason why people don't reverence and respect the house of God is because it's not God. It's business. Y'all run out here to every conference. Y'all don't hear me. Y'all run out here to every conference. <laughs> See, that's why I love my sister. That's why I love my sister. My sister is my sister's on me all the time. She's a Mario. God is going to continue to use you. And you're going to stop all this cussing. And you're just going to walk in what you're supposed to be walking in. I'm a vlogger. I ain't going to lie. I'm a vlogger. But I'm a preacher. I, I was born to this. I, was, I wasn't born a vlogger. I was born a minstrel to God. Period. I just happened to along the way start vlogging. That's what I, I, I along the way I started vlogging. But see, I remember a lady... I will never forget her in my life. Prophetess Betty J. Hill. Betty G. Hill. She said, Mario, she said, God is going to give you a platform. And if they never tell you or bring you to their church, God is going to give you a platform. They're going to fight you in all kinds of ways, but God is going to give you a platform. God has gave me a platform. God gave me a platform. And I'm not here to preach hell fine brimstones. I'm not here to preach hell fine brimstones. I'm just here to merely remind you of who it is that gives us the activities of our limbs. That, 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 that helps us to live and breathe and have our being. Now, to be honest with you, this is a shouting message. This is a shout message, Anne, Miss Anne. This, this is a shout message because when God brings about correction, he's giving you time. 
He's giving you time. Preachers, he's giving you time. Holiness is still right. It's that yoke. Holiness is still right. We still got to live it. We still got to live it. I know y'all like when I be dropping tea. I know you do, baby. I know you do. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I know you like when I drop tea. Holiness is still right. Y'all think holiness is beating up on the gays and you want to you tell folks about sin. But holiness is a lifestyle that you have to live. It's not self-righteousness. It's not self-righteousness. Let's say it one more time. Get off me, Prince. Daddy preaching. It's not self-righteousness. It's not walking around here with long skirts on and, 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 and covered from your head to your toe with, with doilies on and things. No. Holiness is a lifestyle. What do you mean lifestyle? What do you mean lifestyle? It's a responsibility to give God your ears. And when he say do something, you do it. When he say pray for your brother or your sister, you give God your ears and you do exactly what he says. Holiness and righteousness. Oh yes, it's set apart. It's set apart. Holy people walk in the will of God, not in the form of God, but the will of God. I belong to the Lord. I belong to the Lord. I belong to the Lord. Yes, I do. I belong to the Lord. I belong to him. Holiness is if God calls me to steer away. To get away. I can't call you. I can't text you. We can't go out to eat. We can't hang out. Then that's what I have to do. Holiness. Yes, Drew. It's about how you treat people. Holiness is about how you love people. Holiness. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, holiness. Oh baby, y'all is over there following me on Twitter right now because y'all wait for me to drop some old videos. But you know what I'm going to start doing? I'm going to start putting these videos up and I'm going to be preaching right beside them. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you two minutes of a message and I'm going to let the pornographic be right beside me. And I'm going to be like, God is calling for holiness. Oh yes. That's what I should have did. I, I should have did that. I should have put the, the, the pornography right here, my face in the middle, and the person's picture right here, and say, God is still calling for holiness. I don't care whether you gay or straight, blind, crippled, or crazy. God is still calling for holiness. We sitting out here sending pictures and carrying on. She know you said, no, you're not. <laughs> I don't care who you are, what you do, or anything like that. God is watching. And we have disrespected him so long. Oh, yes, we have. We have disrespected him so long to now it's the routine. It's what we do. We get caught up and we keep getting caught up. No regard, no nothing. But what's going to happen one day? I feel my help now. What's going to happen one day? What's going to happen one day when you get caught up and you can't get caught down? What's going to happen when you get caught up and you can't get healed? What's going to happen when, when you get caught up and there's no one there to save you? Lord, save me, God. Oh, God, save me. Yes, Save me, God. No, and he will not answer.
What's going to happen? What's going to happen when you call and he don't answer? What's going to happen when you laying up there in the hospital bed and, you, and you're dying from a sickness that he can't heal you? I don't like it. This, I'm not trying to preach no hellfire and brimstone. I'm just here to merely remind you. I'm just here to remind you. I am just here. I'm just here to remind you that God is real. And he's allowed us for so long to keep going on. We've turned a deaf ear to him. Yes, we have. We've turned a deaf ear to him. And what he's doing now, he's allowing your inner parts. Y'all think it's just the homosexuals? No, baby. He's allowed your inner parts. Y'all having babies out here and your daddies don't want to take him? That's your rebuke. <laughs> hey, yes. <laughs> That's your rebuke. Y'all having babies out of wedlock. You got three, four babies by the pastor and he don't even want to talk to you. He don't want to see you. He treats you like mess and talk about you like a dog. That's your rebuke. That's your rebuke. Oh, how can God do me like it? I love him. And he loves you too. Ha! Ah, and he loves you too. Oh my God. Po, 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 si. He loves you too. Anyways, praise the Lord. I should have put a cash app up here so the saints can give me an offer. Praise God. Y'all can send a cash app to dollar sign Demario Jazz. Praise God. Anyways, though, like, but no, real talk. Um, Because this has been a word today. This has been a word today. And my sister said, <laughs> my sister said, ever since you went to Valerie Burvis, you got saved. No, I've been saved. I just, God has allowed me to just get sick and tired of saying the same thing over and over and over and over and over again. And what he's done, I went to, to a meeting one night. And I saw the people dancing. Hi, oh, Chanel. I went to a meeting. And it wasn't that, you know, I, you know, I quote unquote got delivered or whatever the case may be. It was just that everything that I had been saying, God wanted me to see. Church is not church anymore. It's social media driven. It's good and it's bad. We, we spend a whole worship experience. We spend a whole worship experience. Just right here. Everybody need to be up. Everybody need to have their hands lifted. Have your hands lifted. Come on. Have your hands lifted. It's driven by how many numbers we can get. Get down. It's, it's, it's driven by how many numbers we can pick up. And the Lord said to me, Mario, everything that I've been telling you, I want you to go to service and I want you to see this. I wasn't thinking about Valerie Bur Burris. I don't hate her. I love her. 
And I went to her service and that woman started praying something, you know, you know, you know that song, God is trying to tell you something. God is, uh, baby, let me say, I went to that meeting. I ain't lying. And that woman got to praying. So, baby, it, it called to the deep. Woo! Yes, God. Baby, that thing, I said, whoo, hey. All right. Now, this, this talking to my spirit, man, now. Woo-hoo! And I said, I said, Lord, mm, 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 mm. all I could do is while she was praying would say, God, save us. Save us, God. All folk, why saw folk running around to her? I was like, stop moving and put your hands in the air and surrender. Don't speak in tongues, be speaking your heavenly language. Stop. Put your hands in the air and surrender. And just say, Lord, forgive me. Because I've spent the remainder of my days not even reverencing you. I've spent my time worried about numbers and disrespecting you and your house. We don't even teach people who God is. But we tell people God is Jesus on the cross. We don't even reverence who God is. But we hang a man on a cross in the church and we sit up here and we lie in the pulpit, we cheat and we steal. We go to church and these convocations and these conventions and carrying on and we go have sex and we shout and we dance and we hamba and and everything like that. And we do the same thing all over again. Put your hands in the air and just say, Lord, forgive me. Lord, forgive me. Oh, no, 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 no. Well, Mario, this just momented. This just a moment. Like, this, this feeling ain't gonna last long. No, no. This feeling will be eternal. Because if you really God's, that feeling won't leave you. I don't care what you do. I don't care what you say. I don't care how far you go. This feeling will not leave you. Oh, yes, God. This, because it never left me. Oh, no. It never left me. It never left me. I don't care what y'all think. I don't care how you feel. It ain't never left me. I don't want no peanut butter and jelly. I want my soul, want my soul to be fed. I don't, I don't, no. Don't give me no peanut butter and jelly. Don't give me no peanut butter and jelly. I want my soul to be fed. Y'all don't hear me. I want my soul to be fed. I don't care if you Marcus Rogers. I don't care if you you uh, David Taylor. I don't care if you Joshua Holmes, Brian Carn. I want my soul to be fed. You don't sit up here. God is not pleased. You don't sit up and get to preach and be a hoe. You don't sit up and get to preach and beat on women. You don't sit up here and do all. No, God is not pleased. And judgment has always been in the house of God. We've never recognized it because we always say, oh, well, God, 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 God. No, God is a hard taskmaster. And he's tarried with us all this time. Deuteronomy told us, he said, if you be disobedient, Deuteronomy 28, if you, blessings, blessings, blessings. Oh, we're blessed in the city. Blessings, but y'all never read the rest of them verses. Never read the rest of them verses. Obi baba 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 sanda yeshandoradiosatai. We read, but we don't read. We read, but we don't read with clarity. Shanda da 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 sanda da 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 boko sata ya ikamadiosa. We read, but we don't read with clarity. We were slaves and we was in slavery and told that we could not read. And then we were able to read, but we did not read with clarity. We read only to read to get to know what we're going to do. But we need to read. My, he, the Bible said, my people perish. Let's stop right there. My people perish. What the next few words said? For the lack of knowledge. 
and that thereof. My people read, but don't have no knowledge. My people have books and don't have no knowledge. My people got degrees and don't got no knowledge. My people got DDs and DDs and DDs and EFs and PhDs and still ain't got no knowledge. I've always been here. <laughs> Chanel, I've always been here. I've always been here. You know what I said, Chanel? I said, they don't want to receive me. They don't want to receive me. I came out. The saints got mad because I came out. I said, they don't want to receive me. Even before I came out, they just, oh, they didn't want to receive me. But you know what, what, what it reminded me of? The Lord said, who called you? Ah, <laughs> Yes, Lord. Who called you, Nikki? Who called you, Nikki? Who? Was it them or was it me? You wanted this cross. You wanted your elder's license. You wanted to be on the platform. But nigga, who called you? It was me. Not them. It was me. I called you. I qualified you. I justified you. And you're crazy but allowed your life to get taken down this spiral because you were caught up in people and not me. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Y'all know the rest of that verse. Period. I wanted, I wanted this so bad. Ooh, I wanted, I, ooh, I wanted to be an elder in the church. Oh, I wanted to be an elder in the church. Oh, that was so cause I look so cute in my black with my collar on and things. Oh, I look so satisfied. Oh my God. Oh, and I could preach too. Oh my God. I wanted to preach. Oh Lord. And I was so concerned with people that I didn't realize that. This is only a representation of what your life is. He didn't just call me. He chose me. Period. Period. He periodly chose me from my mother's womb. And I've been fighting this whole time. I'm sitting up here cussing folks out and everything. Now, don't think I still don't know these cuss words now. Mm -mm. <laughs> This is just a representation of what your life is. Your life is yoke. Preachers? Hmm. Preachers. Preachers. This is only a mere representation of your life. Your life is this burden. And you can't do what you want to do and live how you want to live. Oh, y'all got caught up in getting money, didn't you? But you've been called. You've been called. And for those of y'all who've been chosen, let me be your example. It's hard out here. Hard out here for a pimp. It's hard. Because when you're chosen, life is hard. When God started using you for real, they shut your pages down. When God started using you for real, baby, they wants to block you. They want, they want to shut your mouth up. But God's mouthpieces, y'all like to call them prophets and things and stuff like that. God's mouthpieces. People don't want God's mouthpieces. They want a P-R-O-F-I-T. You don't want a prophet. You don't want an apostle. You don't want the fivefold. You want a P-R-O-F-I-T. You want a prophet. You want a prophet C. Somebody put that on the screen. You want a prophet C. A P R O F I T dash S I S E E. You want a prophet C. Mm -hmm. You want them to bring some prophet C. Yeah. Oh, that thing felt good. Hey, that thing felt good right there. You want a prophet C. That's what you want. 
You don't want no prophecy. You want a prophet, see? Y'all, all y'all from conventions and carrying on, you want a prophet, see? That's what you want, a prophet, see? How much money can we bring this week? I need the prophet, see, to come in. I gotta go. I gotta go. I gotta go. I gotta go. Thank y'all. <laughs> Put my little cash app up there. Mm. <laughs> you want a profit C. That's what you want. Profit C. You want profit C to come in. You want, you want the profit C's to come in. You don't want profits to give prophecy. You want a profit C. See, we made a profit. See, we made a profit. See, we made a profit. We did good this week. How many folks got saved for real? Like, when, you, when I say saved, I'm talking about, like, the things I used to do, I don't do no more. I changed my ways. I can't, I can't hang with people who ain't got discipline. I can't hang with people who, who, who sit up here and they just live raggedy. Every sex orgy they in it. Every prophet C is at the sex party. I don't care who you are. God had all type of people in heaven. God had all type of people on this earth. But we've gotten so accustomed to this mundane stuff on this earth. And because the people have lived such a raggedy life in front of us, we've continued living a raggedy life. So anyways, send your cash apps. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. I'm going to do like the preacher do this morning. Baby, I, I worked hard this morning. The Lord woke me up. And whether you think it's for profit or whatever, shoot, ain't no sense in me up here being, being out here and, and, and look, praise God. I, it is what it is, y'all. I'm not whatever. God, is, God has blessed me. God has blessed me. But I'm going to put my cash up up there, okay? Thank you. Shoot. You going to church today and the preacher going to ask you for a word and going to ask you for some tithes and offering. Praise God. Praise God. I love y'all. Love y'all. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. For the things he has done with his love. He has saved me, and His power, He has raised me to God. Ooh, be the glory for the things He has done. All right, love y'all. Talk to y'all later.